Hey guys, it's Melissa here from MelissaOatman.com. Welcome to Awaken Your Inner Awesomeness, a daily podcast devoted to spirituality and self-help. If you're new, I want to welcome you. If you're returning, welcome back. So we have with us today a very special guest. We have Mrs. Jamie Lerner, and she is here to talk to us about all things positive thinking, reframing our thoughts when things happen that maybe don't go our way, so many different things that I cannot wait to discuss with her. So please welcome uh, Ms. Lerner here today with us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. It's so nice to have you. So you just kind of cover a whole umbrella of really awesome things that you talk about. So why don't you first of all, just start off by telling us a little bit about who you are and what it is that you really are passionate about. Okay. Well, I was born with a knowing, and I think that we all are. And somehow along the way, we get a little distracted with everything that's outside of ourselves, And um, so we forget how much we know within ourselves. Um, I studied psychology, became a psychotherapist, had a private practice for a long time and realized that I wasn't really helping people move forward when we were constantly looking backward. So I gave that up and traveled and studied, and now I do something a little different, which is the integrative approach to well-being. And I assist people in assisting themselves in shifting from where they are to where they want to be. And it's a really gentle, fun process that really does not include having to look back very much or very often. So um, that's what I'm doing, and it's fun. <laughs> so what do you think in doing your practice what do you think is probably the number one thing that people struggle with knowing what they want you ask people all day long what they want and they tell you all day long what they do not want and interestingly enough they have a lot of what they do not want so <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny how that happens <laughs> it, it is funny <laughs> Um, so I think once we give people permission to start thinking about what they want, that that's really helpful uh, because I don't believe that people feel that that is something that they can consciously focus on feeling comfortable. Our society does not really reward people for knowing what they want or feeling good, but being the victim, we get a lot of, um, yes, we get a lot of attention. And um, so that's where we tend to stay, is in a place of not feeling good and not having what we want in our lives. And what are some things that you do for your clients to help them kind of get out of that victim mindset? Because as you said, I think a lot of people tend to go there because it's easier. <laughs> yes, so um, I like to ask people about their storyline. Like, what is the story that you're living? And what is the story that you're telling people? And how is that story feeling? So if your story feels good when you're telling it, and it feels good as you're living it, then you're probably doing great. And then just keep doing that. However, most people have this storyline that is doesn't feel good when they tell it and it doesn't feel good as they're living it and they're so wrapped up in it and over time it has just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and actually has taken on a life of its own. And so I ask few people to, um, to look at that storyline and to see if maybe they'd like to change a little bit of it and think about including parts of it where they would like to live the life that they would like instead of the life that um, is filled with trauma and drama and a lot of it is not even true so um, that's helpful because when people start unpacking the language of their story and start thinking about what they do want then they can step into that and begin to live it and it feels really good really good so do you think that people really struggle with maybe even finding permission to have what they want? I do. I, I think that 
Most people do not believe that they deserve or that they can create a life that feels good. However, when you step up and take personal responsibility and understand that everything you have in your life, you have actually created with your thoughts and your feelings, then I think that you can begin to understand that it's all in your hands. A lot of people don't want to take personal responsibility though. So if that's the case, then I ask people to get comfortable with being the victim and at least acknowledge that they are the victim of their own circumstances and that they're going to stay in that victim mode. And now how can you feel better in your situation being the victim? Because I think that's fine too. Yeah. And you mentioned that a lot of people don't feel like they deserve to have what they want. And I think that you're absolutely dead on when you say that. I think a lot of people struggle with that worthiness piece. And so you mentioned earlier when we were talking that you do a lot of self-love work with people. So can you tell us a little bit more about how you help people with that particular um, aspect of their life? Well, I think the greatest relationship that we will ever have is with ourselves and that is the foundation for every other relationship that we go on to have with another so it starts within and with us and how can we nurture and nourish ourselves back into the connection that we have with ourselves so i really believe it's all like an inside job um, so when we tune in to ourselves and our monkey mind chatter <laughs> and start listening to the things that we're saying to ourselves, which we would not say to another person ever, ever. It's awful. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's helpful when we can laugh about it, knowing that it cannot possibly be true if we were to literally understand the things we were saying about ourselves to ourselves. Um, and then to soften that language and to soften our judgment and to start creating a, just a more gentle um, relationship with ourselves, first and foremost. I love how you said it was an inside job and it sort of reminded me of like a heist, like someone going <laughs> in and taking something, but it's sort of, we're almost doing the opposite of that. I feel like so many of our experiences in life are what has robbed us of our feelings of self-esteem and self-worth because we allowed it to. And so you're almost doing the opposite in that you're giving that back to them. Like this was taken from you because you allowed other people's stories or stories you made up from your own perception of what happened in your life. And you've taken those and now we're going to steal back the good stuff in rewriting your stories and all of that. And, and so it, it just sounds like a covert operation, but it really, that is one of the more difficult things I think to do is to help people with self-love because I find in working with my own clients that it's so very deeply ingrained in them. You know, most of our experiences that we had from childhood or from whenever and with whoever those situations occur with, um, have allowed us to become who we are today. There are so many positive things that come out of looking at what happened then from your right here now adult perspective and understanding that, you know, you would have never had these amazing opportunities today if you had not experienced the contrast. And I like to use everything that we are not wanting for ourselves as just that contrast, instead of saying good and bad, I don't think there's good or bad, but to really go back and understand what a gift it was to go through, endure, however you want to phrase it, um, to become who you are now, I think that's so empowering and so helpful and just a beautiful thing. Yeah, so. definitely. I love that too. I think, um, I think that a lot of people would benefit from seeing things that way through that perspective that, you know, the challenges that we've had maybe, and I like that you call them contrasts too, that those were just building blocks to get us to where we are today. 
Yes, yes. So there's a lot to focus on there. However, once again, society does not reward us for that. They are not really, society is not really interested in hearing somebody talk about where they are now. They want to know about the struggle. They're always highlighting the struggle, the struggle. And I just think that that's, you know, that's a choice to go there or to go from, okay, there was a struggle, but look where I am now and to highlight the now and moving forward. Yeah, I think that's so beneficial. I think focusing on the pain instead of the purpose for the pain is really, I think that's detrimental to people, but I think that so many people get into that cycle where they just, that's all they do is they focus on the pain that they had instead of saying, well, what did it teach me? How did it serve me? And looking at it like that, I think is such a useful tool. So there's something called arguing for your limitations. And I think that people tend to use those experiences as an excuse not to move forward. And that's okay too, but take responsibility for that. You know, to say, okay, I'm not gonna move forward because this happened to me and I am just stuck forever. And, you know, I think that there is a lot of power in that statement. You are standing in your personal power and you are taking responsibility for being stuck. And I think that's good too. But don't be the victim of it because you're not. We're not a victim of anything or anyone. Yeah, what what kind of situations do you find that people get in when they stay in victim mindset? I think that they attract many more situations where they can play that role out and be the victim, where they can play out the role of being powerless and feeling like they have no control in their life. And I think that becomes very familiar to people. And so they don't want to consciously say this is a choice because they don't think they have a choice, but it is a choice. It's definitely a choice, which is fine too. Just acknowledge that you're making a choice. <laughs> yeah, I'm making a choice to stay miserable. I agree with you, though, and I do. I really agree with you on that point. And I was working with a client the other day, and I made the same statement. I said, because she was very upset, and she said, I just don't feel like doing anything. And I said, I totally understand that. But I understand that you have a choice to stay there in that place or to take action to try to get yourself out of that place. And I see that so often with people, um, you know, my children experienced depression because they went through um, a traumatic loss. And it was very difficult for me because the mom in me, of course, wants to comfort them and, you know, allow them to feel what they're feeling. And then the coach in me (laughs) says, you know, you're making a choice to just stay here and be miserable and to be upset. Like you need to be doing something, taking active steps, using tools, doing whatever you can to choose a different, you know, thought or choose a different path. And I think a lot of people have a hard time with that. They, they just think to themselves, no, I'm not choosing to feel bad. My life just sucks right now. And it makes me feel bad. And to that, what would you say? I would say, great, so let's figure out a way that you can feel better about the sucky life that you have, but you didn't choose. So how can you reframe your sucky life to at least feel better about it since this is where you're gonna stay? And and people are like, well, what do you mean? Like, how can I feel better about this? Oh yes, you can definitely feel better about it. There's, you know, so, you know, it's interesting. (laughs) you give people the opportunity to stay where they are and then they're like, oh, well, you know, maybe I can do something different. (laughs) (laughs) I think people don't see it. Don't you think that that's a big part of it is they really just don't realize it takes someone else showing them, look, here are your choices. Stay here. Continue having a sucky life (laughs) or take some action to help yourself get out of that cycle where all of these things are happening to you and you're the victim. And And I think the other thing is that people are afraid of giving up the attention that they're getting as well, because we really do give people a lot of attention if they're going through a hard time, you know? 
So um, what will happen if they're not going through a hard time anymore and things are good and are leading a life that feels really good? Oh, they will probably not have very many people in their life, but they will feel a lot better. That's for sure. So I think some people are just really addicted to the drama. You know, I think they're addicted to the attention of the drama, but people who are constantly attracting drama into their experience are very worn down. And they are very tired. And I think that um, that you just, you can go through your whole life this way, but that's not really living at all for the attention of others. It's just not. Are there some tried and true tools that you'd like to use when you work with people who have that victim mindset? I think people will not work with me who do not want to take personal responsibility. And so they will find a lot of people in the profession I used to be in to help them with that, because in many ways, that profession keeps people where they are, blaming family, blaming friends, blaming employers, blaming the world. And as long as you have someone to blame, then you really don't have to take personal responsibility. And it's it's interesting to, to see what's going on in the world right now, you know, and there's such a split between the people that feel They want to step up and take responsibility, not so much hold another accountable, but at least step into their own personal power. And then the other half who really feel like they are the victim to everything. So, you know, I think once again, it's all about choices. And, but there is a big part of the self-help profession that does not help people move forward. It keeps people in that victim mode. And that's what I left, that part of the profession. Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, I think in the counseling that I went to early on, while I did find it helpful, you could only go so far with it. And what helped me more than traditional counseling was like life coaching. You know, I worked with a coach. And, you know, the coach was like, you gotta, you need to get out there, you know, you need to take steps, you have to have action steps, and you have to have a plan, and you have to use these tools, and you need to use them every day. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's the part that I really didn't feel like I got in traditional counseling was tools that I could use that really helped me to stop the negative mindset, to stop the victim mentality. Yeah, and and that's powerful once you understand that you are in control of that. So, you know, the things that are also helpful is understanding what your triggers are. So if you know that a certain thing triggers you to feel a certain way and you're able to be somewhat aware and conscious of that, then to laugh about it and to say, oh my goodness, like here I go again, you know, and then move on to something else substituted with something that is more powerful, that is more in keeping with where you are in this moment and where you want to be. Yeah. So I love that. I always recommend that people have some sort of tool that they can fall back on when something triggers them that, you know, they don't go to that mindset place of, oh, here we go again, that this is going to be bad again, you know, instead shifting the, the script whenever that happens. Mm-hmm. So I think that's great. I I know people who have a phrase like that, that when something happens like that, what they'll say is, isn't that interesting? That's perfect. That is, that's perfect. And for me, I always say, oh my goodness, here I go again. And then I really laugh, you know, almost uncontrollably. And that helps me reconnect with me. So I think it does what we all need to do sometimes, which is not be so serious and take ourselves so seriously. Don't you agree? I do. I think we take ourselves way too seriously. And the other thing that I think we do is that we judge people all day long, which is really just moments of judgment of ourselves. So when we're the most connected, we don't judge anyone for anything because we're not judging ourselves. And so that's, you know, kind of like a little trick. If you, catch yourself judging someone to really like bring it in and ask yourself like, what is going on in this moment that I am not feeling great about myself, that I am projecting this onto another. Um, And that's a great question to ask yourself in a lovingly curious way. 
and to try to get to the bottom of that for yourself, about yourself. So. I really like that you said in a lovingly curious way too, because <laughs> um, we need to be reminded that the reflection is not criticism. And there's a big difference in that. And I love that when you say, when you wanna judge somebody, think about why you're doing it in a loving way. Uh, because it's true, it, it does point out that we're being critical of ourselves, but projecting that onto someone else. And I think we're way too critical of ourselves. So we need to remember to be more loving to ourselves. Absolutely, yeah. And then we will attract more loving relationships and friendships and experiences into our life. Yeah. I, I tell people that all of the time when you work on yourself and you, you know, you raise your own vibration, yes. you call people with higher vibration in, you attract more and better people into your life. And it happens quickly. Like it's not going to take a long time. Once you make that little shift, I think it begins to show up really, really quickly, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah. I, I found it incredibly, um, surprising in a good way when I started working on myself how much things shifted and how fast they shifted for me yeah. <laughs> which you don't expect that to happen and I always tell people too like you know it does take work it is not overnight but you do see a lot of positive things happening rather quickly when you learn to work on yourself and you feel better and feeling better, I think, is really important. People, um, I don't know, I think people spend way too much time not feeling good. So. Yeah, I find it surprising now, but I was also one who did this, that we want to focus so much on thoughts that don't feel good to us. Yes, we get trapped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a trap. So remind yourself of that and distract yourself and get your, you know, get your head out of that, out of that because, um, yeah, distraction is very important. I think that we must distract ourselves by doing something else, even watching a movie, taking a nap. I mean, whatever it is to kind of break that repetition compulsion, um, that kind of overthinking about the negative over and over again, especially if we've like made a mistake. And we think like, oh my goodness, like this person, that person, the other person is thinking this, that, and the other of me. That is not true. You are thinking that of you. It has nothing to do with another person. That other person has forgotten about whatever that was. They, people are not that interested in us. <laughs> Just kind of any time thinking about the mistake that we made in our work. Up. So. Yeah, I mean... I can remember having a conversation with someone and you say the wrong word and so you feel stupid and you take it back and then the old me would have replayed that over and over like, oh my gosh, you're an idiot. And they probably think you're an idiot that you're not educated and all of these things when the reality is that people don't remember those kinds no. of. They don't. They don't. Well, I love that. And so do you, um, do you have a way that people can work with you and follow you or, you know, if they want to learn more about either working with you to help shape, shift their own mindsets or uh, just want to follow you? Yes, I have a website. It's www.jamie-lerner. And I also have a texting service. It's called the Quickie, a lovely texting option, which is really, I, I really like to work with people that way because they send me a text message and then I text them back and they text me back. And, and then they have an actual, like, um, you know, manuscript to go back to and look at and realize that so many of the things that they were asking me about, they had already answered their own question. So I just become a conduit for what they already knew. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way for people to remind themselves that they know so much that they can be their own greatest resource. So to trust yourself, to love yourself, to know yourself. Um, I think those are really important things that um, we can remind people about. Mm 
So, great. So, um, I will include the link for your website in the show notes to the podcast. Are you on social media? Um, yes, I have a Facebook and Instagram and on Twitter. And I also have a book that I wrote, I co-authored. It's called The Ever-Loving Essence of You, and it's available on Amazon. And in that book, it's just all the things that you already know but have forgotten, and just lovely reminders of how to create a long-term connected relationship with yourself. Nice. That's very nice. So in this crazy time of chaos and everything (laughs) going on, What advice could you give our listeners for when you get into that pattern of overthinking and, you know, self-sabotaging thoughts? What (laughs) advice could you give them? Um, How best can they get out of that? I would say you need to throw yourself on the ground and laugh uncontrollably. That laughter is so helpful. It really is. And to tune in, to listen to the things that you're actually saying to yourself about yourself and understand it is just so untrue and completely absurd. So I think that's really helpful. And to understand that you always know, even if you don't know how or why, you always know for yourself. Always. So trust yourself. Yes, you are a very powerful person. You know, we all are. We just forget that sometimes and we give our power away to others, to whether it be thoughts or, or people or, you know, things we need to remember to take our power back. That's a great piece of advice. Yes, and a lovely option. <laughs> yes, for sure. It sounds a lot better to say, you know, I, I can control my thoughts and I can change what I'm thinking about in an instant and laughter. You're right. That is something that can snap you out of it instantly. You know, if you've ever had a fight with somebody, the quickest way to get out of it is to make the person laugh. And then you, then you can not be so serious. And then you can actually talk about things. I remember when my kids were little, this just amazed me. Girls and boys are so different. And my daughter with her friends, if there was a fight, it was a huge dramatic thing that required many conversations. And one day my son and his best friend were playing and my daughter came downstairs and she said, mom, um, Chris and Jared, they're punching each other. I'm like, what? I ran upstairs to see what was going on. And they like, they had an argument. They hit each other one time and then one of them made the other laugh and then they were fine. (laughs) you know we can't do that but it it wasn't a long drawn out thing they're just like oh yeah we took care of it it's fine we're good now like okay yeah a little emotional intelligence that goes a long way (laughs) don't punch anyone i'm not recommending that at all (laughs) i'm just saying that you know whenever the mood was lightened after that had happened it was just like an instant yeah we're we're best friends it's cool no big deal <laughs> which goes back to not taking yourself so seriously which right. you had said it's true <laughs> yeah lighten up yes exactly <laughs> that'll be the theme for today try to lighten up a little bit <laughs> well i want to thank you so much for being here with me today this was such a lovely conversation and thank you for inviting me i appreciate it Yes, and I hope that all of you will go and check out her website and her book even. Um, And so if you send me the link to your book, I will put that on my um, show notes to the podcast as well. So all you guys have to do, those of you who are driving and couldn't write down what we said, you can go directly to the show notes and you can just click on the link and it'll take you directly to her website and to where you can purchase the book. So thank you so much. Uh, for being light and sharing. (laughs) Thank you. And I want to thank each and every one of you for being here with us today and for being such amazing listeners. I really appreciate all of you. And if you like this podcast, please subscribe. Please leave a positive review from wherever you're listening. You can leave some stars on iTunes. 
biggest compliment you could ever pay me is to share this podcast with other people. So I want to thank you for those of you who've already done that. Also, you can follow me on social media. I go live Mondays at 630 Central on Facebook, where I do a free card reading. If you show up for the live, I'll pull a card especially for you. And I also um, have coaching available. You can just go to my website, melissaoatman.com. Check out all of the services that I offer. I want to thank you again for being here with us, for being a part of my soul tribe. I hope that you will have a beautiful day from wherever you're listening. As always, I am sending you so much love and light, and I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.